and welcome to Talking Hope. We're so pleased you could join us. I'm Rachel, I'm here with Dan, and we're gonna to talk to the amazing Tim Yao. Tim, where have you come and joined us from today? Uh, I'm based in Norwich, well, a suburb of Norwich in East Anglia. So I sometimes tell people I'm from the Far East and that kind of throws yeah. them because of, you know, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The Far East, you've made it here today. Yes. And in particular, um, we wanted to talk to you about um, talking toddlers. Mm -hmm. But first of all, why don't you explain what you do in Norwich? Well, I've got two jobs. I'm a mission enabler for the Diocese of Norwich, so that's yeah. kind of coming alongside our churches and getting them to be more outward looking. And the other side of it, I'm an associate priest in a just a normal average parish, but we've got a load of new housing there. Uh, so I'm placed in there, so I'm a pioneer minister in this new housing area, trying to get community cohesion and trying to get missional projects off the ground. Fabulous. Wow, that sounds really exciting. So how did you come across talking to others? Because you're thinking missionally, were you out there looking for summer or did you stumble across it? And then kind of what, what tell us a bit of the journey since then. Well, I, I mean, I subscribe to all the hope stuff, you know, so, you know. Fabulous, it, Tim. Com comes to my yeah, inbox. Great. And, oh, that's uh, great. Not to your junk or. <laughs> no, 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 right, no. Good. And so I looked at it and uh, I thought, well, this is brilliant. And I've actually been sharing it to other people who are involved with children's work. So, yeah, that's how, how I got into it. It, toddlers. it had some amazing stats, didn't it? So um, for those who haven't seen it, just to give it like that 74% of the parents with children under five are in touch with the church, many of them regularly. We have just this incredible mission opportunity. And it's not just the parents, it's also the children. So both of those groups, we get regular contact with them and we have this incredible opportunity um, actually of mission amongst them. Tim, how did you get involved in a toddler group? Well, there was a woman in uh, I, uh, the toddler group we, I was involved with was in a, uh, uh, a community centre, so not not a church community yeah. centre. It was just a normal community centre, and I was taking my um, what was then a three-year-old along to it just yeah. for something to do, and she was looking for help. So I said, okay, well I can help out. And it, I wasn't my normal area of expertise, to be honest, Rachel. Uh, yeah. So I started helping out, doing the coffee things like that, and then she said, I'm leaving. I was like, oh no, what do I do? Because <laughs> I yeah. thought this is not my thing. So I said, I'll do it. And I had no, no, not much background in it. The only thing I'd been doing is turning up. Uh, so I took on board the toddler group and it started from there really. Wow, that is quite some journey. And what, like, what happened at toddlers? What, what, what normally happened in a toddler group? Well, they used to do a bit of stay and play, so the parents were there yeah. and uh, they, you know some open play, and then we'd move to some singing time, and that was it really. The the woman was perfectly lovely, people liked her, uh, but I, I felt quite challenged when she left, thinking, well, you know, this is great, but where does it talk about Jesus? Where's the Jesus bit to it? And that's the bit I started to think about. What do I need to do to kind of implement some change here? And that was the bit like from the research, wasn't it? Where just people actually, they're, they're coming along for some, although yours is in a community centre, still that openness to something that is distinctively Christian. Um, what did you do about that? Did you have a go? How did that feel? Well, I did feel a little bit awkward because it wasn't something I'd started. And yeah. So it was never part of the plan. It's not like Saint Somewhere's, you know, children's group. So I was a bit cautious. I read the research and thought, I, I want to do something. Because I always thought I was just there for the parents, you know, to chat and get to know them. But so I thought, well, I'll introduce a Bible story. And at first, yeah. uh, you know, I found some decent Bible stories uh, and uh, out of a children's Bible. And I thought I just kind of rattled through them because I wasn't feeling very confident. But, you know, no one batted an eyelid. I thought wow. they'd, be, they'd be leaving. I thought that, oh, it's Bible. We're not interested. And it kind of grew from there, really. So uh, that's how we introduced the Bible stuff. And, and just to come back there, you, you made a comment about I was just focused on the parents. Because I guess for a lot of people, when it comes to running toddler groups, they are very much focused on the, the kids, the toddlers, just like, you know, and maybe we bring a Bible story, maybe we don't, you know, it's about that. But there's this whole group of adults there, isn't there? And so for you, as someone who's like, toddlers ain't my thing, mm. <laughs> I've kind of inherited this and taken it on and filling the gap. You were really focused on the parents. Tell us a bit about that. Like, why, why did you do that? Well, I think partly done that's because we're in a, a new housing area. And so a lot of these people are moving in for the, you know, the, they're new to the area. They don't know each other. So I wanted to create a space where parents could get together. And, and the lots of them were saying they were really pleased that when I put it on, they were very positive about having a space to make friends and things like that. Because there's no, there was no pub, no cafe. 
So this was one of the only places that could meet all the local people. So I really felt my role there initially was to kind of facilitate those relationships to build a sense of community cohesion. But I never even considered the kids. For me, mm. the kids were just a byproduct of creating space for <laughs> adults. And wow. So you, you've got stories nailed, no one left. What happened next? Well, you know, we, we hit lockdown, didn't we? Wow. And, uh, you know, and I thought, well, what are we going to do? And, I, you know, I thought, well, everybody started moving things online, so I thought, well, I'll try that. Uh, and I, I thought, well, I don't, can't do stay and play for two hours online. That's not really <laughs> going to work. No. So I thought, well, we've got an opportunity to kind of change things. Instead of just doing what I was doing before, uh, I started to introduce crafts. Now, I am not a craft person, Rachel. Wow. Yeah, I'm wow. Just... What, what was your <laughs> level of craft before this? Uh, I mean, can you think? Or, uh, and make, what have you, what's I been your... Make, maybe yeah. make a paper aeroplane. I was about, about <laughs> to use that as an example. I was like, can you do a good paper aeroplane? Yeah. Is that yeah. even a craft or yeah. is it just... I, I don't know. And so uh, <laughs> I just started like, you know, randomly searching things on the internet going, I need, there's a theme. What? Now I found that a lot of the crafts online were kind of, you know, American and it was a lot of Bible stuff, big, you know, scriptures. And I thought, well, this is not my clientele. It's not a Sunday school. So I had to kind of just beg, borrow and seal and try and find stuff that worked. And little by little, I kind of learned on the job. I, so you're good now, are you, with well, sellotape glue, <laughs> pipe cleaners, got here, that nailed? Yeah, yeah, here's one I prepared earlier, yeah, there's all that yeah, kind yeah. of very blue what, what was your, what was your, have you did have a craft crisis at any point, something just like, it just bombed, it just didn't work? Yeah, a few, yeah, a few. I think of one where we, uh, I was trying to get them to do something with Play-Doh, and I was, I was doing this uh, Genesis, you know, the God creating the people out, nice. the, out the earth, nice. and I was making yeah. my Play-Doh person, and of course the head fell off, and it cracked <laughs> over, uh, and so that wasn't a yeah, great yeah. example. You were like, God was a bit more careful. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah he was did a bit, a bit more better gentle job, when he created better job. Yeah. 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 And the, these crafts that you were doing with them, you've really driven a purpose behind that. You hinted at kind of where you started there. But as you're doing these online toddler times, how are these crafts kind of painting a bigger picture? Well, I was very aware that, you know, uh, I wanted to paint that big picture of the Bible. You know, so often we kind of focus in on a little bit. And I thought, well, actually, I want to get the kids knowing the story. And I always thought, I've got two uh, audiences here. I've got the little kids. I've mm -hmm. got to engage them, get them to feel like they can get involved and they enjoy it. But also I've got the parents who've never heard some of this Bible stuff before. So I had that very much those kind of two uh, audiences in mind. So I wanted to paint this big picture. And so every week we do the craft, which relates to the story. And so uh, we make this, whatever the thing is, it's different, you know, uh, and then it goes on the shelf behind me. Great. And over this year, this shelf has got fuller and fuller of stuff that tells the story. And I can keep referring back to, like, oh, remember Joseph? And I bring back the silver cup down. Or remember Noah and I've got the rainbow. Or whatever it is. So it kind wow. of paints that bigger picture of the, of the whole gospel story of God. How far have you got? Well, we started last Easter. So we did start at Easter. We got to Revelation, I know. Whoa. I know. Wow. It, and, and just what craft did we do for five-year-olds for Revelation? I mean, <laughs> Dan, you got any ideas? So many options. How many headed beasts did we <laughs> yeah, have? <laughs> yeah, our Play-Doh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you had to steer clear of some of those yeah, kind of, of more, <laughs> more creative uh, pictorial but, issues. But the bigger picture of Revelation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we did the trees by the fruit. Nice. The trees are the fruit for the heat and the leaves of the nations, that kind of thing. So that worked. And then we went back to the start again. So we started wow. with Genesis and we're currently up to Gideon. That is fantastic. Wow. How many uh, actually turned up online? Well, I mean, again, you never know. Because my actual uh, on-site group, the maximum we'd ever have was about 20 plus adults yeah. and their kids. But I've been amazed that sometimes we've hit, you know, hit the 90s with this. I mean, wow. obviously, that's at the initial, but it's kind of tailed off a bit. But we've got a regular uh, following and it's new people. New wow. people finding us and joining, wow. uh, you know, and, I've not met them in face to face yet. I'm looking forward to when I do get to meet them face to face. So it's been really interesting. Can people come and see this online if they're looking for inspiration, Tim? Where are you, your stories from Genesis to Revelation, uh, suitable for toddlers and parents? Can they come and have a little taste? Is yes, that there they can, somewhere? They can see us on, on Facebook. You just need to uh, log on to our uh, Toddlers in Kringleford or Kringleford, yeah, Toddlers in Kringleford uh, Facebook page. Look Great. us there and we're, we're on there, yeah. Fabulous. And if people want to find out more about the research, you can come onto the Hope Together website, look at Talking Toddlers. There's a report you can download which gives all the amazing stats and figures that will get you truly inspired about um, Talking Toddlers. So we'd love you to do that. Tim. What an amazing story. Thank you so much. I am so inspired Dan, by your story. are you going to go off and try some craft? I, I think I might. I think I might. <laughs> but what an incredible story of growth and multiplication and capacity increase. Yeah.
So and amazing. at a time of lockdown. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Tim, for being yeah. with us. Thank you.